Hey everyone, we're on Fort Seal, Oklahoma. This is an army base. And there are a couple cemeteries on this base that are interesting. There's pet cemeteries even. We've ran across two pet cemeteries. But this is the old Apache Indian Cemetery and I thought we would wander around and see what we could find. As you enter the cemetery, it is really spaced out. Lots of room in here but quite a few graves. So these are all Apache in here, and as you can see, Norma Nostili, Apache relative of Casper Callis, 1828 to 1908. This is the Apache daughter of Nostili. Not sure if I'm saying that right. Nosy Nostili, 1845 to 1895. This is clearly a family here with the last name Callis. Quite a few right from the turn of the century, 1903, 1902, 1907. Right on the edge of this cemetery is this little creek running through here. And of course, this is a road that we came in on and turned right before you get to this creek. Very peaceful out here. You're just hearing the wind. I can't even hear the water running through here. So this one says, Clara's aunt, Apache aunt of Clara Bell Spitty, Gladi, April 6, 1901. This one says, Glory, Apache woman, November 20th, 1899. This right here is a whole row of the Spitty family. As we were walking through the cemetery, I noticed this on the tree. Some little bag that's tied to a branch right there with a bread tie. Not sure what that is. This says Guy Amardo, Apache stepson of Chief Geronimo. December 11th, 1895. So this one right here by the tree, I don't know if it is a resting place or just a memorial, but it says William Mayfield, 1908 to 1999. And of course there's different rocks and flowers, figurines down here at the bottom. And then we can see some butterflies that have been placed in the tree here. And another one of those ceremonial type offerings, I guess. And you can see where maybe they've placed others with a clip here, because there's several clips. And then you can see a tack that's here in the tree. So some sort of custom that I'm not aware of. So I'm gonna try really hard not to butcher these names, but they are a little difficult for me. But this is Burdette Tishna. Apache Warrior with Geronimo, 1866 to 1900. Carlos Keeney, Warm Spring Apache U.S. Scout, husband of Martha Prince, 1881 to 1923. So right here beneath these uh, cedar trees is Chief Geronimo himself. Of course, a lot of this family right here. This is uh, Ishke Bidonkele, Apache widow of Chief Juh, 1825 to 1897. Here you can see Eveline Goline, Apache daughter of Fred Godley and Eva Geronimo, August 20th, 1910. But this is Geronimo right here. And uh, these are round rocks that you can see these round rocks in the area, specifically in Medicine Park. Practically the whole area is made out of these round rocks, so little cabins and restaurants and all sorts of structures. So these are native to the area and they've uh, constructed or erected this little pyramid with Geronimo right there and this eagle uh, that's on top has the head that is 
gone. I don't know if someone broke that off. Can't, can't imagine trying to do something like that here on the base. But they have this round rock path, and on this round rock path are tons of coins, mainly pennies, but there are nickels and dimes and all sorts. But there are also cigarettes and cigars and another one of those little uh, maybe ceremonial pouches with something in there, some kind of spice or herb or something like that. There are a few feathers placed around it. But this is one of the more famous chiefs. Geronimo was an Apache leader and medicine man who carried on the tradition of resisting colonization of their homeland in the Southwest. He was fearless and resisted anyone, Mexican or American, who attempted to remove his people from their tribal land. Geronimo was born in what is today Arizona in June of 1829. He was part of the Badonkahe subsection of the Chiriqua tribe of the Apaches. By the time he came of age, the Apaches were at war with the Mexicans to the south, the U.S. government to the north, and also neighboring Comanche and Navajo tribes. Personal tragedy shaped his hatred for anyone who attempted to subject him or his people to change. While he was away in 1851 on a trading trip, Mexican soldiers killed his mother, wife, and three children. He then burned his family's belongings and set out to avenge his family's murders. The 1848 signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo brought an end to the Mexican-American War. Mexico ceded much of the Southwest to the United States, including Apache land. The Gazden Purchase in 1854 gave even more land to the U.S. in today's Arizona and Southwest New Mexico. In 1872, the United States created a reservation for the Chiricahua Apaches that included some of their homeland, but were soon forced to join other Apache groups in the San Carlos Reservation. Geronimo absolutely hated it there and broke out of the reservation on three separate occasions. Geronimo and his followers traveled as much as 100 miles per day in order to evade recapture. Geronimo and his band raided both Mexican and American settlements. This became an embarrassment to the U.S. government and military. In March of 1886, General George Crook forced Geronimo to surrender. But at the last minute, Geronimo and approximately 40 of his followers escaped under the cover of darkness. A quarter of the U.S. Standing Army, which was around 5,000 soldiers, pursued them along with 3,000 Mexicans. They held out for five months and Geronimo turned himself in on September 4, 1886. Geronimo and his fellow captives were then sent to Florida by train. There, the Apaches became depressed and sick from tuberculosis and malaria. Many of them died and they were then transferred to Alabama where they did not fare any better. Ultimately, they ended up in prison at Fort Seal, Oklahoma, where they did much better. They came off of the trains and heard the coyote howl for the first time in years, and they felt more at home. However, it was not home. Geronimo pleaded for the rest of his life to be able to return to Arizona and die where his father and people had died before him. Geronimo spent 14 years at Fort Seal. He only left on special occasions that were government-approved. He made trips to world fairs and Wild West shows such as Buffalo Bills. All of these he was put on display as one of the unbeatable leaders of the American West. He even participated in President Theodore Roosevelt's inauguration. He was in the parade and it was to show how the U.S. conquered the Wild West and was able to do anything that they pleased. Geronimo saw it as an opportunity to plea for his people to return to their native lands in Arizona but it was denied. Geronimo died from pneumonia at Fort Seal on February 17, 1909. He is buried here in the Beef Creek Apache Cemetery at Fort Seal, Oklahoma. Oftentimes it is difficult to separate the myth, legend, and true facts of Geronimo. He was highly respected by the white man for his bravery and lack of fear. 
Paratroopers during World War II shouted Geronimo as they jumped out of planes readying themselves for battle, paying homage to the Geronimo's bravery. So this is Zia, and she is right beside Geronimo right here. This is the Apache wife of Geronimo, sister of Effie Binde, 1869 to 1904. So just to the right and back from Geronimo is La Zia, Apache warrior with Geronimo, 1840 to 1896. And here is Da Kia, Apache warrior with Geronimo, 1861 to 1899. Now this is Lulu Geronimo Donze, Apache daughter of Geronimo and his other wife, Chi Hashkish, 1865 to 1898. So this is the final resting place for Chief Loco, Warm Springs Apache, 1823 to 1905. Chief Loco was a well-respected voice for peace among his people. His stance was resented by the rival Apache chief Geronimo. In 1882, Geronimo used a gun to force Loco off of the San Carlos Reservation and join him in his war against the Americans and Mexicans. When Loco was able to escape from Geronimo, he returned to San Carlos. Though he voluntarily returned to the reservation, he was arrested and sent to Florida. Then back behind him is Chispa Udoli, Warm Springs Apache, wife of Chief Loco, 1823 to 1895. And then this is another wife of Chief Loco, Chis Odol Netlin, Warm Springs Apache, 1829 to 1909. And Sarah just found a third wife of Chief Loco. These are all Loco right here. Apache son of Chief Loco, right here, Warm Springs Apache, wife of Chief Loco, 1843 to 1909. So as you look around in the cemetery, everyone pretty well looks alike with the exception of Geronimo and a few modern uh, memorial markers that are in here, but this is the only one in the whole cemetery that has a fence around it, and this is Grace Rose Sunday, born December 3rd, 1895, and died April 25th, 1911. Not very old. And you can see a foot marker right over there. Nice iron fence all the way around it, though. Frank Mangus Apache L Troop, 7th Cavalry, 1876 to 1903. So there are quite a few markers in here that just say Apache woman. Nothing else that they're related to anybody. So they kind of stand out, but there are quite a few of them. And they'll just say maybe the date of death here and then Apache woman. This one just says Chiz. Apache woman, May 17th, 1895. Whereas the others will say that they're the daughter of or the son of or wife of. Stuff like that. That's what all these say, the mother of. These are a couple others that just say Apache woman, and then this, these just say Apache. But we're at the far stretches of this cemetery. And so it starts thinning out, a lot of room left. There are more recent burials in here, which I will not show. But, uh... A lot of these are older. These are Pedro Jose. Like I said, some of these came from Apache that were down in Mexico. But that says Apache February 7th, 1895. And this is an Apache woman, Najo Zuun, 1894. So these are just two lone graves over here all by themselves kind of overlooking this creek over here 
and more of those retaining walls right here with the rocks, big old boulders here. Pretty clear water really with all the leaves in there. But they both just say Apache woman, Bilth Joye, June 28th, 1896. And then Sun Et Zosun, Apache woman, December 2nd, 1896. This is Mildred Imok Cleghorn, December 11th, 1910 to April 15th, 1997. This is the chairperson of Fort Seal, Apache prisoner of war. This says Theodore Roosevelt Chi, Apache son of Hugh Chi and Alice Longfellow, 1908 to 1910. And there are several here that are from Alice Longfellow and Hugh Chi. And then this is Koshe, White Mountain Apache wife of Chiracoa Tom. And I've also seen uh, several of those as well with that last name, Tom. That's Hetty Tom right there, Apache daughter. I do love the names in here, and uh, by no means am I trying to butcher them or anything, but they're just so neat sounding, or neat to read anyways. Nakish An, Apache mother of Magado and Ototai, 1821 to 1899. And this is Nazun Un, Apache wife of Harold Dick, 1843 to 1903. Adis, Apache father of James Russell and Tom Duffy, 1851 to 1895. And then right beside him is his son, James Russell, Apache son of Adis, 1877 to 1911. The other son, Tom Duffy, I'm not sure where he is. This is Lucas Eyelash, Apache son of Eyelash and Edith Jones, August 26, 1895. Edith Jones is right here, the Apache wife of Lot Eyelash. So you can see all these acorns down on the ground here. And there's a lot of these oak trees in here. Now these are large acorns in here. I mean, you can see them compared to my hand. Lots of squirrel food and deer food out here. But I think I figured out what these are. These are just retaining walls to keep the cemetery from eroding away and from trees falling down in there. So they've placed these rocks down here to prevent erosion. I think this is just a retaining wall. But the way they had that, I thought maybe that was an old bridge that went across. That is a massive tree right there. But there are these oak trees and then some cedar trees and pine trees and then some pecan trees in here as well. So a whole lot of food, so much food that it can't get eaten. There's too much of it. So there are quite a few here that are the last name Nietzsche if we're saying it right. Jacob Naichi, Apache son of Chief Naichi, and Ha'o Zini. But these are all from Chief Nachi. So anyways, thanks for joining me on this cemetery tour. You can see it stretches quite a ways that way. We've walked the whole thing and looked and read at every name and just mentioned a few here in the video. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.